Pumped. If you're flat, Rene <laughs> Rancor will bring you to it. Bill McCreary is your referee. Jerry Gauthier and Sweet Knox, the linesman for tonight's very pivotal game number five. In the Montreal goal tonight, who else? Number 33, Patrick Rua. 3.25 goals against in the postseason, but he has done better than that against the Bruins. He'll have Roberge, Corson, and Keane in front of him, along with Cote and Odeline at defense in front of Patrick Rua. Andy Moog at the other end of the building having a superb postseason in his own right. He stole game number three in front of Moog tonight. Neely, Janney, and Nyland with Weimer and Bork, the amazing Raymond Bork at defense in front of number 35, Andy Moog. Dave, it strikes me as Robert, Corson, and Keane, and Odeline out there. Pat Burns sending a hitting message. I think this first shift's going to be physical. And I think that's why Mike Milbury has Chris Nyland out there along with Jim Weimer with Neely. We're going to see, uh, I think, probably the most physical game of this series tonight. Certainly the Bruins have to send a message. We're here to play. You're going to have to work hard tonight if you want to take a win out of the garden. This should be fun. We're ready to go. Here's Fred. All right, Jenny and Corson. And the draw is to Odeline. And Odeline clears it in. That put Raymond Bork and Robert and Nyland go at it right away. Well, there's a real surprise. I don't know. Robert's jumped Nyland. Now it should definitely be an extra two. Robert was really, he's frustrated. That Nyland was, Nyland had him all tangled up there in no time at all. Let's take a look at who isn't playing tonight for the Montreal Canadiens, for the Boston Bruins, excuse me, Carpenter, Walls, Mark Ward, Bob Sweeney, he will be sorely missed on penalty killing, Tintal, Peterson, and Beers not dressing, Walter, Swoboda, Ewan, Daniel, and Lebeau not dressing tonight for the Montreal Canadiens. 
He said about Stefan Lebeau, does not play well in a small building. Right here, O'Line dumps it in, and an elbow by Nylon, and then in comes Roberge. Now, watch Roberge is going to get loose. Nylon kind of jockeys him around a little bit, got him wrestled down. Now, Roberge thinks he's going to get hit. Chris Nylon just wanted to stay out of the penalty box, got attacked. Was that just coincidental that the Canadian's door Imagine opened? That? Can you imagine? No, not that. It's just that <laughs> you believe that the, the penalties were coincidental. It should have been. Well, it could have been a, an original two to Nylon for elbowing, maybe. Sure. Oh, I'm not surprised at that. The draw to Court Dolly's shot is blocked. Pullen takes over. In the center ice, he spun down Carbono. Bruins drive it in the Montreal zone. Trying to control it on the board. And heavy hitting there. Christian dug it free and lost it to Schneider. And away comes Riche looking for Scrudlin. And Spico held that one off. Fork cleared it and iced it. Brian Scrudlin having a real problem with Petri Skriko. The Bruins are going to try to do to the Canadians what Montreal has been doing to Boston. That is the forwards have to slow down the Montreal forwards. Not allow them to be so aggressive with their forward checking. Boston has spent far too much time in their end of the building in this series. And I had a lot of conversations with, with a long conversation with Harry Sidden about that. David, he, it, it's in the rule book. You are not allowed to impede the progress of a forward checker. Like that's exactly what Scrudlin was there. Now Skrekis, Skrekos is tugging and hooking and drawing right. them, and and it it is part of the game that you've got to you start holding up those four checkers, you lose a lot, and you lose the, the excitement of the body checking. It it should be called more often, and then what's happening is everyone's allowing it to happen. So it's like they put the penalty away. No one uses it anymore. Well, the Bruins is back to Desjardins. Quick shot blocked in front. The Bruins going with Ron Hoover and Doris on this line. Galley back in action. And a heavy hit by Galley on Riche. Knocked him down. But the Canadians keep it in. This is a big battling line right near the crease. Finally tied up. And the bodies are falling all over the place. Gary Galley won his with Riche. Sweeney drew his for the Robers. Everybody's getting in it now. This is going to be a long night, I yep. believe. Hope you have uh, breakfast ready because uh, we could be here for a while. There's a message to be sent tonight, and both teams are on the sending end right now. Montreal is here to play in physical. Boston has let everybody know that they're going to play it tough tonight. It is no score of Boston and Montreal back in the moment. Ken Hodge out for the faceoff. You're looking at Don Sweeney. He's on defense. And the big line there for Montreal. Don Sweeney gives away so much size here to Brian Scrudlin. But does a good job of holding his own. <laughs> Sweeney never went for the fake punch. There you go. I'll go. Yeah, you want to go? And that's what the Bruins did in the, up in Montreal. Was kind of laid off that a little bit. So Hodge wins the draw for Galley. But Don Sweeney hits Doris on the go. Two on two for Barrett. A shot. A save. And a clear by Wawa. Kept in by Galley. Galley cuts behind the net. He's checked. Lost the puck, but Doris gets it. Doris trying to spin it in front. Now battles for it in deep. But the Canadians get it to Odeline, the defenseman. He makes a quick clear out. Into the corner, way out of the net. Mold checks his Scootlin getting it behind the net. Scootlin spins it in front. Goes off on the boards to Corson. Corson to Riche. This line has played very well. And they keep it in now. Trading passes. Corson gets it back. Broken up. Taken down. Out comes Doris again with Hoover. Main Mariners playing with Burridge. That's the line. Hoover, Doris, and Burridge. And they change up. Schneider in the center ice. Lazaro takes a run at Savard. On the puck, Janney. Forced to clear it in. Back for Schneider. After him is Lazaro. Up the boards. Turgeon can't get it. Maybe icing. No. Mold plays it. Hammond. Trying to move it out. Lazaro can't get it. A pass from Wesley to Lazaro is ruled offside. Cam Neely sent a message there to Matthew Schneider. 
This copyrighted program is brought to you under pay cable TV rights granted by the Boston Bruins solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or the use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the written consent of the New England Sports Network and the Bruins is prohibited. Craig Canny out there against uh, Carbono. Carbono has Courtnall on the right and McPhee on the left. Gary Galley has made his presence felt. Boy, they have missed him since he left late in game number right, one. Right there, Cam Neely. Matthew Snyder curled the corner. But he had a lot of room and a lot of freedom in Montreal to do that. Neely finished the check, came down. Snyder had to dump it off the boards. You're not going to carry it by the train that's out there on the right wing. So you dump it off the boards, and it was a nice except for Monk fielded it. Wesley is on defense with Ken Heaven, so several of the main Mariners in this one. Here comes Janney. Neely off wing side back for Janney. Tried the pass, didn't work. Janney gets it, trying to put it in front, gets it behind the net, looking for Neely, cutting. And Hammond cut and couldn't quite get it. Janney almost set up Hammond right 20 feet in front. Wesley turns the net, gets it out to Janney. Driven in by Nyland now. And Boston changes up. Down deep, the net is lodged. Uh, they're going to let the cross check on Desjardins, Janney, into the net go. No score, Boston and Montreal on Nessa. In the corner, getting it to Neely. Now he gets it away. Patrick Awad dives in it, catches it, and that's a pushing in the shoving now. Here we go. That you're not going to intimidate Cam Neely. Watch Dufresne, 34. Take a run at Janney. There's a left punch that Dufresne gets away with. Here he comes again. Now Janney's being held, and Dufresne and Cote. Janney can't get in being held away by Cote. Now you got Neely coming around to pick up Dufresne. Well, let's take a look at this swap. We've got three Bruins in the box. And Cote and Dufresne in exchange for Janney, Bork, and Neely. If a general manager made that trade, he would have. <laughs> it'd be one of the great trades of all time. In terms of manpower, it's got to be one of the great swaps of all time in playoff. They just took the heart of the Bruins' power play and threw it in the box, although the power play's all but over, so Bart will be out in two seconds. In exchange for Dufresne and Cote, we're what, the numbers four and five, five and six defensemen? Well, it all evens out. Two minutes, everybody comes back. Well, it evens out in minutes, Turk, but it doesn't even out in manpower. There's the penalty I was looking for. Bork got the extra two. There's, a, I was looking for that extra two. How are you going to do this? One of them might have ended up with a four and an altercation, but not the case. Billy McCurry, one of the better referees in this game. Kind of missed the left punch by Dufresne. And the draw is back to Galley. It's the second power play of the game for the Montreal Canadiens. Wesley check. Now it is Savard holding it. Four forwards on the power play. Portnall to Corson. To Schneider. Shot a save by Moe. Bruins pulling, able to clear it. For Lazaro, who drives it down. Janney, There's Bork, and Neely, Dufresne and Cote, all two minutes each dropping. That's Vincent's pulling right there. Out comes Courtnall. Gives it to Savard. Savard along the line, holding. Drops it back. Bruins break it up. A two-on-one. Here comes Pullen with Wesley. Saved by Roa. The Bruins have had three shorthanded bids on two Montreal power plays. 105 left on this one. The power play for Montreal, 10.42 left in the first period. Up for Burridge. He drops it in the Canadian zone. Fred, they changed the penalty on board from roughing to high sticking. 48 seconds. Christian checking. Corson winding up now is Courtnall. Forced back by Burridge. They move it up to Carbono. In the center ice, it is McPhee. McPhee clears in. Mold blocks it. Don Sweeney wraps it around. Not out. But he gets it from Duchesne and clears it. 20 seconds on the Montreal power play. 
Bruins break it up again. Heavy Great collision. Hit. John Sweeney and Roche. Great hit, Sweeney on Roche. Canadians move it in now. In front of the net, Bruins break it up. Out comes Christian. Alone, shorthanded. He drops it in the Montreal zone. And the Bruins pull off the power play. They have pulled off two. The fans applaud. No score in the game. Thanks to Patrick Wawa. A couple of spectacular saves. A jam at the Boston Blue Line. And afterwards, a hit by Odeline. And Weimer moves on to Odeline. Now, why doesn't McCreary have the arm up on that charge by Odeline? No idea. No idea. Billy McCreary, I mentioned, is one of the better referees. He lets you play hockey. Which he is likes fantastic. his games tough. But I'll tell you, no one, McCreary hasn't thrown anybody yet off. Weimer and Odeline are both going like the linesman told them to go. They haven't got penalties. I didn't know what he's going to call. Matthew Schneider and Petri Skrico now. I don't know why Neely and Janney and Cote and Dufresne aren't out. They had two minutes and had to wait for the next whistle. I guess they have to wait until they're escorted out of the box, but uh, they should be out. They cannot, they won't be allowed to go on the ice right with now. this melee going on. It is Boston nothing, Montreal nothing. The first period on Nesson. We've got the changing of the penalty box right now. You, you three get out, you three get in. Stefan Richet getting a little lippy with... Ben Westy getting the stick up there in Odeline's face. Nyland, Weimer, and Wesley, Odeline, McPhee, and Richet all get penalties. The roughing, I would guess, we will wait for the official announcement. But Nyland had all three Canadians in the box. Richet, McPhee, and Odeline all up and yelling at him. I guess that's uh, Chris's job. Get the other guys thinking about anything but what they're supposed to be doing. If I was playing on the, on the Bruins today, the one person that I would line up, and I really respect his talent, is Matthew Snyder. Yeah. Stop Matthew Snyder. He brings an awful lot to this team. He is a very good hockey player. But there's the extra shot. And there's another chub, and okay, I'm going, so let's start some. So Odeline turns around in the melee, gives Bruins a little slap in the back of the head, whoever it was, trying to get something stirred up. But Matthew Snyder is the one you're going to take the body on. You want to start running him the way the Canadians are running board. And Matthew's going to have a lot more difficult time moving the puck. He's the only one back there that can do it consistently. I think you'd have to key on him if you were playing against him. Uh, maybe Bill McCurry now is laying down the law of the land to both benches. He just could finish explaining to make Mike Milbury what he expects. The uh, Pat Burns is over there with his hands up, nodding his head, saying, I got I got you, Bill. I understand where you're coming from. Maybe McCurry saying, look, I let you guys play. It's getting a little silly. I'm going to start calling everything now if you keep it up. So get to playing hockey. Problem is that you get your your dander up and you're just not about to just roll over and say No, I'm gonna play like it's a Figure skating The shots are eight to four Boston the Bruins had an excellent power play the power play of the Canadians They've had two one about a minute and a half the other a complete two and uh, the Bruins have had three shorthanded shots while the Canadians have tried their power play Excellent penalty killing by Boston. The teams are at full strength. Not a bad move here either, having Randy Burridge as a centerman. Played there a couple of times last year and played very well there. Ray Bork is out there. Pokes it up to Burridge. Burridge flips it in. He's on with Hoover and Doris. Maine Marin is well represented by Doris and Hoover and Hammond. Desjardins hit by Hoover. 
And the Canadian defense forced to just clear it out. Back for it, Ray Bork. Bork couldn't connect with Hoover. On the puck is Burridge. Burridge over the line. Let's it go. Saved by Rowa. No rebound. And jamming again. Keen and Lazaro separated. 8.43 left in the first period. No score. Burridge is a setter. Something new for Randy. Keen trying to come out. Check. Burridge keeps it in. That was the Bruins' Doris moving on the defense and forcing the play. Now Cote snaps it out. In the center ice, Keen. He is broken up. Back comes Burridge. Burridge for Don Sweeney. Shot just wide of the post to the right of Rawa. Bork had it at the line. They say offside when he drove it back in. So. I think he cut Keen in the chest. The Montreal Canadiens have been so proficient in packing down low and, and packing in front of Patrick Roy, trying to take the Bruin forwards away from the offense, that the Bruin point men, the defensemen such as Ray Bork and Don Sweeney, Glenn Wesley, when they get the puck back there, they've got to shoot. That's where the offense has got to be generated from tonight. Well, I think so. What, what is it? Everything kind of forgotten. Now the credit you give to the Canadians and the way they played, they played very well in games three and four. Well, a lot of it is because the Bruins weren't skating. They were flat and they got flatter. And they just went from mediocre to worse. Now this is an effort. Now they're both they're both up for this one. The both teams are flying. Burridge is a center. Hoover plays left wing. He usually has been a center. And Doris at right wing. Schneider. And Cote. Hey. Intercepted by Doris. Trying to break right in. Doris. Shot. Save. Well, it was behind him, but not over the line. Doris breaking in as the Bruins are right on top of that Montreal defense. The puck sat there, and Patrick Rouard didn't know it. Peter Doris didn't know it. Randy Burge didn't know it. Pete, Finally, they all realized Peter that Durris the puck had, was loose. Peter Doris had gone for the backhand. What a tremendous burst of speed to get in there. That's the number one draft pick of the Winnipeg Jets, and now a Boston Bruin. Boy, this guy has got a million moves. Right here, he cuts back. There's Jim Wynn. Went for the poke check. That frees him right up. Andy Moog sees that. Martin had that move maybe about six feet closer that wrist shot might have beat him. There's Matthew Snyder knows he's going to get hit and just totally let the puck go. And avoided the check. The Canadians have Scoodlin, Corson and Richet the big line the Bruins counter with Burridge Hodge and Doris. And Mike Milbury has had Hoover Burridge and Doris on against this big line. Hodge wins the faceoff. Clear to the Montreal end. Back for Dufresne. Now Roche winding up. Slowed down, but checked by Hoover. Burridge gets it back. Marvelous defensive work by the Bruins there on Roche. He found no opening. Canadians ice it. Dufresne just iced it. 5.35 left here. No score in the first period. The shots are 12 to 5 for the Bruins. Stefan Richet. What can I say? What a shot he's got. Shoots the puck so hard you can't even see it. Four or five of those we've seen this year. Associated Press picked our own. Dave Shea is the be best sportscaster in Massachusetts. Congratulations. Congratulations, David. Hey, thanks, guys. I'd like to give give credit to you guys equally, but it was for radio, so I, <laughs> I, I can't drag you along. <laughs> uh. Burridge is a setter. Some improvisation by Mike Milbury. Goodland works it out, looking for Corson. Checked by Hoover. Hoover's played a fine game. Puck wrapped in the Boston end, and Bork starts it back. 
Burridge has lost his helmet. Can't set up a play at the Boston line. 5 12 left, first period. Dufresne iced it. I've never seen the Montreal defense standing still so much. Schneider, Dufresne there, just standing. Well, this is the hit. first time in the series they've got their head up. Yeah. They're going, uh oh. They're going to run me. They're going to hit me. They're going to take the body. So, what you tend to do when that happens is get the puck, get to the puck early, turn around, look up ice, and I got control of it. Now, what am I going to do? And you tend to just stand and look and then make the play standing still. No one in this game is effective standing still. You have to be in motion. Don Sweeney's still, still out for repairs. Hopefully, maybe taped in returns. Got to tip your cap to the effort of Peter Duras and Ron Hoover so far in this first year. They have done a tremendous job getting in on that Montreal defense. Nearly on the faceoff, rolls it near the net. Some converted sentiment for Boston. Bruins battle to keep it in. It's knocked out. Hammond is on the Boston line. Up for Janney, tipped in wide over a walk. Schneider there, Janney right on him, breaks him up, and it's back. Lazaro to Galley, the shot, the save, the rebound. Cleared out. And Portnall gets it. Byers could be icing, but Mold forced to play it with two Canadians on it. It's up to Janney. Pass across. Hammond forced to try and clear it out. Stop. Janney clears it out into the Canadian zone. Back for Dufresne. After him is Neely. And Lazaro. Lazaro. They take him down. Lazaro, a good hit on him. It's back to the Boston end. Kip to center ice. Loose puck, Hammond, over the line for Lazaro, shot and a save, the rebound covered by Cote, he clears it up, breaking Portnoy, over the line, he's broken up, puck kept in by Carbono. Carbono trying to drop it to the point, it's picked up by Bork, a break here with Janney, over the line, he tries to shot, the rebound, missed by Nyland, who went in, and the Canadians clear it again all the way to Andy Moog. Bruins 15 shots, five for Montreal, but they haven't beaten Roy. Hoover at center ice. He's a left winger playing excellent. Now Desjardins winding up. Persia blocked. Nylon couldn't get it, and out comes Keane. Keane over the line. He's broken up. Weimer grabbed it. A lead for Nylon. Nylon a shot and missed. Rebound. In the center ice, Weimer, a heavy hit as he flattened Keane at center ice. Perjean with it. A drive deflected high over Moe's head. Wesley trying to come out. Gets it up. The Bruins break it out. Nylon in the middle of Weimer. Back to Nylon. Leaves it for Hodge. Hodge trying to put it in front. He's hit by Schneider. Perjean with it. Perjean checked by Lazaro. Loose puck, center ice, Hodge wraps it back in. Desjardins just fired it away, icing. Boy, the Bruins have been on top of that young defense, and they've just been firing the puck out. Right here, Ray Bork, working the puck, waiting, just slides it through, looking for rebound. Chris Nyland almost gets to it, just goes under the tip of his stick. Just kind of tugged a little bit by Desjardins. All of a sudden, this the the ice it a few times, and this is a young defense again. This, the Bruins are just skating a lot better. Burridge out there with Duras and with Lazaro, and the big line on for the Canadians. Bruins press the play. Keep it in on the boards, knocked out. Burridge slides it away for Wesley. Wesley drives it in. Play has been in the Canadian zone, as the shots indicate. Offside. Offside. 2.13 left here in the first period. 15 shots Boston and five for Montreal. The Bruins have taken it to them. I did what you did, Fred. I looked to that. I heard the whistle and I looked for penalty. Very John Dufresne. No penalty. Offside. Good clean check. Now it is Poulin, Squico, and Christian. Face off just outside the Montreal line. Dufresne on defense with Cote. 
Bruins have had just one power play. The Canadians, two. Okay. Pass stopped. Poulin drives it back in. Back for to frame. Icing again. If it galley. <laughs> he put a pretty good take on hustling going back. You're right. You got the old pump the arms and don't move the legs trick. Well, Gary Galley won. You don't want to go back there on an icing call and, and blow that leg again. So you say to yourself, I'm just going to do this quickly and smoothly. Have you seen the Canadian defense just fire the puck out as they have? Yeah. Well, I've seen it. Just that's what they did. It? That's what they did all year long. The Bruins just made them look like world beaters for, for a couple of games up in Montreal because no one checked. No one hit. Now Montreal's defense, the only one back there that can move it is Matthew Snyder. I mean, anyone can ice it. And they've been doing it. And they're, they're, no score. Just under two minutes left. Janney is out there now with Nyland. You, you give anybody the, time, Fred. They can make a great play back there. Scrutlin and Janney. Janney wins it. Wesley pops it in. Caught by Rowan. Fumble. He's able to cover it up. Oh, he missed it on the backhand. I watched him earlier. He stands part of his little little repertoire of warming up his little bag of tricks is to have Mike Keane flip, I mean, Gil Chris flip shots to him. You know, on his catching glove. And I watched him in a warm up. And he missed very soft from 15, 20 feet out, just flip shots. And he was missing them. He wasn't catching them cleanly. He was trying to catch them in the webbing. I don't know if, it, if he's recovered, fully recovered from the injury or whether he's in shape or not. Bothers me, he's a tremendous goalkeeper. Janney clearly won the last faceoff. He's in again, and they put Carbono out this time. And Carbono gets it to Schneider. Where is it? He just drilled it out. Bork fires it back in on Rawat from center ice. Janney moving on Schneider. Schneider. Can't clear it out. Kept in. Wesley. Holding. Moves in deep. Puts it in front. Deflected. Neely with it. For Wesley. Wesley. Check. Canadian just. Portnall just clears it out. They slide it all the way down the mole. Montreal looks like they're trying to just get in the period. Get this period over with. On the puck. Janney. Trying to break in. Janney. Checked on the play by Schneider. Canadian. Flip it out. Carbono just cleared it. He's fighting now, boy. Galley wraps it back in. Neely, Nylon. Nylon has it. Puts it in front. Miss bounces for Galley. Galley in. Shot. Neely scores! And Neely fired it. And the Bruins lead 1 0. Boy, did they deserve that goal. Montreal just trying to get into the dressing room. Just trying to survive this period, nothing, nothing, so they can say, all right, let's regroup. These guys are coming at us. Wave after wave after wave, like the Minnesota North Stars are doing to the St. Louis Blues. Just coming at you. Nyland hits Odeline. Odeline gets banged by Neely. Nyland's got the puck. Finds Janney. It takes a brew and hop. Goes to the blue line. Great play into Janney. Watch Neely get loose. No one picks him up. Might have gone off, Chris Nyland. Okay, Neely gets it. 54 seconds left in the first period. The Bruins take a 1 0 lead. Bork fires it back in. 17 shots to five for Boston. Poolin there with Christian and Strico. Rudlin breaks it over the line. Holding. In deep, Galley and Corson. Richet and Poulin. Scrutland, too. In the corner. Canadians get it. Scrutland. Shot. Save! And he moves! With plenty of action in front. The body's falling. Gary Galley. Tell you what, he's brought a... One tough customer out there. <laughs> he's taking on Scrutland. He's taking on Corson. He's running people. Now there's going to be a penalty. The first time the Boston Bruins, all, all period long, did not attack that Montreal defense. They sat back. Dave, you saw Poulin go to the front of the net. Watch and wait, and then he backed off and let them carry it. 
one player takes it the length of the ice and the Bruins get in a little bit of trouble. You must force that Montreal defense to move the puck. The village idiot could stand back there and make a good play. High sticking on Galley of 1940, a power play for Montreal. This is their third. Boston's had one. You've got to get on that defense. They're just too good. They're young. There's a lot, awful lot being said. Here's a little look at the goal again about how young they are, but a lot better than people are giving them credit for. But you've got to check them. Cam Mealy in traffic. Patrick Wad down in desperation. And this time he goes upstairs. Neely from Janney and Galley at 1906. But Boston shorthanded now. Pressure. Quick kick out save on Scrudland by Andy Moe. But kept in by Desjardins. Drive by Schneider and the save by Andy Moe. Drive by Schneider. Kick to the score by Montreal. With six seconds left, a power play goal by Montreal. Scrudland will tip it as Schneider drove it, and it is one-to-one. One. Well, Gary Galley had a few choice words for Billy McCreary. The Bruins never got these shots out. Airborne, there's Scrudland. Takes out legs, Mo, Moe's leg. Now he gets in front of it and tips it. It works by Scrudland. Scrudland from Schneider in a power play for the Montreal Canadiens. And that'll do it. In period number one, dominated by the Bruins, but they wind up at one to one with the big goal by Scrudland right at the end. So at the end of the first period, 17 shots Boston, seven for Montreal. It is Boston one, Montreal one, and we'll have intermission highlights in a moment. Okay, thank you, Tom. Teams are out. Bill McCrary talked to Carboneau and Bork. There's plenty of uh, hitting and no Lady Bing treatment in that first period, but the Bruins wound up with just one power play. The Canadians with three. Right, and that's, uh, if I were Mike Novry, obviously he'd be taking a look at that. Sam, why? I mean, it's physical on both sides. If you're going to let them go, the Bruins, 17 shots, the Canadian seven. So you got to say things are in their favor with the three power plays. Montreal gets seven shots. Pat, the game is 1-1. Guys, you know how it works out. Those things all even out by the end of the night, so all Boston has to do is come out and play the same way they played last period. Right, so. up, in, up in Montreal, Dave, we did the pregame, Fred and I, about really what was happening. What, a big fear was Patrick Roy coming up with a mode-like game. He didn't need it in game four. He He's needs got it tonight. one going tonight. He's got one going tonight. <laughs> Tom no. Sweeney back. That's good news. Tried to find out exactly what he hurt, and I was told everything. <laughs> I think that pretty well described it. He was spread out on the board pretty well by Carbono, but he's back. He's tough. All these guys out here are tough. Boy, they've been pounding on each other for 20 minutes, and we've still got 40 to go. Anyway, the way things are looking, it could be uh, twice that many. Well, I'm not happy with the ice conditions. There's a serious puddle of ice. What happened? I'm puddle of ice. Okay, you okay? Okay. <laughs> Everyone for you too, boo boo. Uh, a lot of water down there. It's warm in here, and the Zamboni is supposed to plane and leave water at the same time. And an extra turn in Montreal's end. It did not dry in the warm up, after the warm up. So just in front of Patrick Lois, between the hash marks, pretty soft area. Not as warm in here tonight as I thought it would be. Wesley drops it over the Canadian line. Hustling in is Burridge. He's a centerman now. Center on the line with Doris and Hoover. Hoover batting to keep it in. Rolls back to Wesley. Wesley pops it in. Save as Burridge is knocked down. The Watt makes the grab on the flip in by Glenn Wesley. That's what the Bruin defensemen have to do, and they get the puck at those points. Get it back on net and hope that there's a rebound. Randy Burridge was waiting for one. The better wrist shots in the league belongs to Glenn Wesley. He gets rid of it very quickly and low. But here it's coming off the glass. I mean, off the boards. Just a snappery shot. Rouault gets to catch this. Burridge gets turned around by Desjardins and Dufresne. 
All right, fighting with the base off now. Hoover into the corner against Cote. Goes down. Goodland, Burridge, Hoover, Cote. Cote is corner. Got a call holding on the stick. On the stick, a perfect call, but he just let that go. Schneider able to clear it out on the left to the Canadians, and over the line it is Richet on Bork. Richet lost it. Bork moves it up. Wesley, the way to do is to break out with Hoover. Stopped at center ice by Schneider and cleared right back in. Bork there with Richet after him. Bork up for Hoover at left wing. Makes the clear out. This line, the Burridge line, is played generally against the Scrutland line, and they've done a nice job. Hoover and Duras dressing for this action, the first that they have seen. Puck flipped in and back for it is Galley. He's on with Wesley. Up for Hoover, missed. Will be icing against Boston. That's the first time the Bruins have iced the puck. And we have a face-off in the Boston end. A lot of the icing comes when the referees, I mean, the linesmen see that both teams are tired and it looks a little on the deliberate side. And Pat Burns? Boy, he has really slimmed down this season, hasn't he? He's just a shadow of his old self. I know flattery will get me everywhere with Pat, huh? Yeah, I. Not likely. Carbono to McPhee, and the shot is wide. Portnall pokes it in. Don Sweeney back. Line change, Montreal on the go. Bruins clear it out. Desjardins gets it now. Keen, Savard, broken up by Christian. The Poulin rolled in wide of Roy. To train back. Looking for Keen. Stopped by Don Sweeney. His pass blocked. A breakout here, and Don Sweeney broke up Savard. Able to flip it right back in. Big defensive play by Don Sweeney at center ice. Savard was going to lead a three on two. Here's the thing you can't back off, people. There's Desjardins, the 21 year old defenseman, gaining the Boston line, broken up by Galley. Galley is checked, though. Can't get it. Savard down, jammed it up. The Bruins spin it out. Boston changing up. Desjardins with Janney. Up for Keen. There's a nice play by Janney. Now it goes to Carboneau. Fortunately, offside as Neely missed it. Boston won. Montreal won. Second period on Nesson. 7-1 left. The face off to the right of Rouen. Damn, Neely did an awful lot of handling of the puck on that power play. It's Bork gets turned here. Neely gets popped. Here's Cortnall getting in. Glenn Wesley just bothering him enough. And he won't get the angle on that. Hoover taking the face off now. Place of uh, Burridge. Randy's done an excellent job. It is Hoover, Doris, and Burridge. Against this big line. Mike Melbury's had that matchup. Here's Riche moving in for a backhander, and he went wide. And they can't let Riche move in like that. And they haven't for the most part. Bork broken up inside the line. Orson broken up. Moog out of the net to drive it away to Bork. Bork clears it. Riche intercepts. And Gilchrist got it over the line, but put himself offside. Bruin penalty. Somebody slashed Riche. Power play Montreal. The Canadians do not have a shot in the second period with 6.27 left. Score tied 1 1 on Nessa. Randy Burge is the guilty party. There's a slash right there, right along the right forearm. Boucher had a few words for Randy Burge. Yeah, but he's back out there. Oh, yeah. Act like he. And the draw back to Schneider as they win the faceoff. Schneider, shot deflected wide. Ray Bork on it, makes the clear. Schneider starts it again. 
Now for Scootland. The portion checked by Poulin. On the board, Lazaro digs it free. Drops it over to Raymond Bork. Lazaro is gone. Wow. And Wesley able to clear it. Fourth power play for Montreal. They're one for three. The goal by Scudlin from Schneider. The Boston goal earlier in the first period. Neely from Janney and Galley at even strength. Down goes Richet. Galley was after him along with Lazaro. Desjardins. Pass over the line. Don Sweeney there to hammer it out. Mike Milbury makes a change. There's Ted Sater with him on the bench. Gordy Clark, Rick Bonus, who did an outstanding job. Maine Mariners, also on the coaching staff. 54 seconds left, Canadians power play. Desjardin clears it in. Pat Burns going with two defensemen, not the four forward system. Savard puts it across. Great skate save on McPhee. Behind the net, dug out by Don Sweeney. And cleared by Hoover. A smart move there by Ron Hoover. He's done an excellent job of yelling that penalty. That's the only shot of the period. Mike McPhee got it for the Canadians. Savard clearing in. Back is Jim Weimer. Around the dasher. And out by Cote. 12 seconds on the Canadian power play. Christian fires it up. Cote starts it back. All the way to Mold, or it would have been icy. Bruin, kill off. The power play, just the shot by McPhee, and it's the only shot of the period. Here's Burridge back out of the penalty box. Drops it for Christian. Puts in, saved by Lola, with Burridge heading for the net. No I, rebound. I like Randy Burridge as a centerman. He's scooting around. He's very quick. There's Randy Burge. I think he played three or four games at center a couple years ago, Fred, and then he had one game last year that he played well at the position. Very good. Neely, a backhander, and a save by Rouleau, and he never saw it. Weimer, a shot, blocked in front. And the Canadians break it out. Gilchrist going to center ice. Over the line, holding. Shot, save, mode. No rebound for Turgeon. And Rouleau made a save. He never knew he made. I think he hit the post. Did he hit the post? I think that's exactly what he hit, Turk. That looked like it was behind Rua. Might have got the right leg on it. Uh, we don't, don't know. Let's take a look at it from here. There's Weimer's shot that hits the foot. The, the post of the shot was earlier. But it's a quick shot that really a lot out of Elaine Cote's leg there. Now, that was a dangerous shot by Weimer to get loose. That wasn't the one, though, that nearly took. Here we go. Right here. Is a Cam Neely shot. Here Hit the, the inside of the post. Inside the far post. Patrick Wa beaten cleanly. Yikes. To no avail. On the draw, Hodge there. And Nylon breaks it off. There is it over the line. Neely going for it. Neely for Nylon. Nylon broken up at a poke check by Carbonell. Back to Portnoff, can't get it. Back to Weimer. Weimer fires one. Reflected into the corner. Neely on behind the net for Janney. In front. Shot by Nylon. A save, and he is hammered down by Schneider. Bruins again all over the Canadians, but here's a breakout by Courtnall. Courtnall forced back by Janney. Great defense by Craig Janney to get back there. Carbono to Turgeon. Flick into the stands. The Canadians have two shots on Andy Moog. The Boston Bruins eight in the second period on Patrick Roy. The game tied at one, and the Bruins have 25 shots to nine for Montreal. Watch Chris Nyland make Matthew Snyder pay for this. Taking him in front of the net. Gets away with it. Then it <laughs> gets high stick. Matthew catches him under the arms and throws him to the ice. Nyland catches him in the face with that stick. But I'm sure that's it. Oh, he's going to be visited, visiting the dentist all, all summer, <laughs> no matter who wins. 3.14 left in the second period. It is still one to one. Nyland had a close in bid then. Matthew Schneider playing tough. 
And again, Milbury matching the Burridge line against the Scoodlin line. This time, Scoodlin works it to Luche. Shot blocked. Burridge and Hoover wrap it out. This is Burridge, Doris, and Hoover. And Hoover and Doris, of course, up from the main Mariners. They've been practicing with the Scrubs. Their first game this won't, season. Won't be their last. Riche able to check by Galley. Battles for it. Galley holding him. Corson now behind for Scoodlin. But Burridge is on him. Burridge up the board. And a breakout by Doris. It deflects into the stands, though, on a face-off call. And some action behind the play. It is Corson and Don Sweeney. <laughs> Don carried his check out and took Corson down, and they disappeared behind the boards. Well, Shane Corson is playing rather immaturely. He's trying to play the tough guy role. When he got four points in game four, and he's playing great hockey. Now he's out here trying to... Well, I think he's always played this way. Oh, Kurt. I know that, but I mean, he's a leader in this hockey club. Before, he was just a, a, a player trying to earn a reputation and, and, and try to stay in the league. He's too good a hockey player to be up here all the time with that. One to one the score. The Bruins' superb first period. Probably their best of the series in a one nothing lead, but Scrutland tied it up with six seconds left. And the Canadians are just waiting for a break with just two shots in this period. Hoover gets it over the line, blocked along the line. The Canadians break it out. Coming in Scrooven. is hit by Wesley, and Hoover takes it over. Hoover breaks it out. Heavy action behind the play. Now Bork picks it up. Bork for Doris, for Burridge. Shot, save by Honduras by Patrick Rowell. The Bruins getting their chances. Wesley battles to keep it in, but a hand pass to Burridge, and that is a face-off. Wesley and Scrooglin were entangled. Wesley has both Scrooglin and Corson talking to themselves. Wesley lined up Scrooglin, give him a dandy check along the boards, and Mr. Scrooglin took exception to it. Now they've both been trying to get him back. There's Wesley gets the elbow up first. Now down along the boards, Wesley catches up with him, and Beth, Biff, he gets a double. Then it's a punch. Wesley takes that. Good hockey. Good, solid, tough hockey. What a defensive line that Burridge, Duris, and Hoover have been. They have done a marvelous job. That's a coaching move, put that line together. That's a line that could have been second-guessed, but they have come out to play hockey. Ron Hoover has played well. Peter Duris. Tremendous speed on the right side. He brings a lot right there. And then a shot at Brian Scrutlin. He knows what it's like to play against Peter Durs. Jenny Lazaro and Neely. Wesley and Bork in two minutes left. Bork. Backhands it in. Taken down with Lazaro. And one of the call. Keen able to tip it out. Neely breaks it up. Rusty's pass up taken by Cote. In the center ice. Steal. Jenny. Jenny trying to break in. He is pulled down. Penalty. As he draws the penalty. Cam nearly almost broke through. 127 left. The Bruins will go in their fourth power play. The Canadians are one for four. And the game is tied at one. Ah, this is good tough hockey. What a move by Craig Janney. Played a marvelous game thus far. Get the blame for the hockey club. There's Jeff Lazar. Bounces off one man. But Janney sneaks through the middle. They haul him down here. You could have you could have let this go. You let everything else go. And right here, no real infraction at this point. He fell on his own, really. Twisted his elbow around, got his elbow. Might have thrown him a little off balance, but it was an offensive rush, so. Call a penalty. Elaine Cote for tripping. 127 left in the second period. One to one the score. The Bruins 26 shots. The Canadians nine. The Canadians with just two shots in the second period, even though they had a power play. Rujichka out there with Janney and Neely. Wesley and Bork. It is only the second shift 
of Vladimir Rajichka. Very, very hard for Rajichka to come out, show you the skills he's got. He has, the body's dry, it's tight, it's sitting on the bench, and he's got tremendous offensive skills. He's skating around a little bit, trying to get the heart pumping, get the body going. Patrick Lewis fixing some equipment, trying to buy some time. Make the Bruins think about it. It isn't like kicking a field goal. The draw won for Desjardins, and he clears. 120 left in the period. Back goes Wesley. Quick call and Carbono. Bruins. Wesley starting out. Up for Neely. Neely has trouble with it. Broken up. Covered by Wesley, and he's broken up. Four. For Janney. In. Rajitska scores! Vladimir Rajitska from Janney on a power play to make it 2 to 1 Boston. One very happy Vladimir Rajitska. One very happy Mike Milbury and the Boston Bruins hockey team. What a play this was by Craig Janney. The power play looks like it's going nowhere. Montreal is pumped, thinks they're doing the right thing, but nobody picks up Rajitka. Snaps it off. Dufresne can't pick him up. Patrick Awad down on the ice again. And he looks at this angle he's got on this. And he doesn't have anything. What Patrick Awad is doing down there amazes me. Better goalkeeper than that. Well, Rajitka hasn't played a minute of hockey, but he gives the Bruins a lead with 58 seconds left in period number two. The Bruins have dominated the game, but it's just a slender one-goal lead. Janney and Bork will get the assist. Janney has assisted on both Bruins' goals. Kicking out Guy Carbono for dumping Dave Poulin. Poulin gets it back for Bork. Bork snaps it in as the Bruins take the lead again. Around the board, Squico able to keep it in. Jam it up. Look for a faceoff if he can get it. Christian there to help out. Squico. And they keep it in the zone. Time. Oh, quick whistle. Petri Skrico had it. Finally, a face-off call. 36 seconds left. Rajichka from Bork and Janney at 19.02. A power play goal. So each team one for four in power plays. Scrudlin for Montreal. And earlier, Neely for Boston. The teams were at even strength when he scored. Well, you know, what said about Ray Bork, Cam Neely. Here's Carbono and Ray Bork. Ray Bork to take a nothing. There you go, Guy. How you like that? Trying to get Bork off the ice. Raymond standing up for himself. One solid, strong, clean, tough hockey player, Raymond Bork. Pooling on the draw, 36 seconds left in the period. Christian and Squico on the wings. Wesley and Bork inside the line. And the Bruins lead it two to one. I you know Craig Janney, we mentioned earlier, took the blame for the loss in game four. Not many athletes do that. He's come out to redeem himself thus far in this one. Well, you name me another one. Who's done it? I, I, I don't know. This quick now breaking in. Shot. Six seconds left. They have contained him all night long. And Andy Moe. It's in his glove. glove. <laughs> Andy caught that. But that went so purely into his glove. He loses the feel for it, I think. There's a break for the Canadians, and you don't want it to go to Russ Courtnall. But there he, see, he had it. He thought he deflected it. It's all he really wanted to do with the thumb. Out of it, but he caught it deep in the webbing. Then he couldn't feel. He motioned to the stands to lead everyone to believe that he deflected it into the stands because he never really knew where it was. <laughs> he made a great reaction. Uh, whether it was a great save or not, it was a great reaction. On the draw, into the corner, Wesley there. Hit, gets it up. The Bruins break it out. A three on two for the moment. But Poulin dropped it outside the line. And the Canadians come back. Portnall. Away now to McPhee. McPhee check. Broken up by Dave Poulin. Can't clear it. Pass bounces in. Bruins trying to clear it out. 
And finally they do. Oh, time runs out. But the Bruins, twice they've taken a lead, and then the Canadians come with their really their only surge of the period. It is 27 shots, Boston 10 for Montreal, Boston 2, Montreal 1, and we'll have intermission highlights in a moment. Thank you, Tom. And the late goal, power play goal by Rajichka from Janney and Bork. Bruins lead it 2-1. to one. I think the story of this game, though, is Burridge, Hoover, and Duras. Well, that, there's, no, there's no doubt about that. Vladimir Rajichka, nice, nice move by Milbury to put him in, but I think they... There's Hoover. There's that pressure we want on that defense. Desjardins forced to come up with it. To come out from behind instead of making a play and waiting for that centerman to curl. Hoover wouldn't let him. That whole line is doing an excellent job. Peter Duras has brought a lot of offense to the line. Burge some solid, smart center ice work. Hoover some muscle and some certainly hustle. That line just out of the air, Mike Milbury created it. Hoover's out of the University of Western Michigan, signed with Hartford, then Hartford's pick, but then last two years mostly in Maine. And he's 25 years old, and Peter Doris is 25 years old. They're on starting now the third period with the lead 2-1. to one. No icing. Desjardins back, and here comes the four checking. But Rawat gets it around, and it's up for Scrudlin. Scrutland to Riche. Riche over the line. Trying to cut in. Does. Just checked at the last second by Burridge. And let's see what the call will be. A Bruin went down. It's going to be Burridge, I think, for hooking. As Riche moved in with a scoring bid in the opening minute of the third period. You're right, Derek. Randy's the one getting the gate. What for? Oh, boy. What for? What? Hooking? Come on, Billy. Each team one for four in power plays. Montreal's lone goal was Brian Scrudlin. The only, one that the only one that hooked on this play, and you could call, is Wesley. That is that isn't hooking. That's his arms. That's what turned him. He gives it to Burridge. Now that shows he missed the play. Scrutlin on the draw. Bork with the clear as Poulin got it back to him. Lozaro and Poulin up front. Bork and Wesley. Just on the way, third period, two to one Boston. Lache in the center ice. Jeff Lozaro had this. Bruins clear off McCrary and breaking for it. Poulin gets it over the line, is checked, moves it into the corner, battles for it there, falls down. Canadians try to dig it out. What a great job of killing off the clock, Poulin. And the Canadian Schneider breaks it up, wraps it around the board, and out. Cote back for it. Up for Schneider. No more of the four forward situation. Jose kept it in. In deep, Don Sweeney. Check. Corson digs it for Riche. Check behind the net. Pop back. Schneider unloads and misses. Boy, he can really rip them. Riche trying to put it in front. Does. Wrapped around the boards and out by Bork. 40. Seconds left on the Montreal power play, just underway third period. Ferdinand just buried Ray Bork with a cross check right in front of McCreary. No call. Going to the bench. It is Cote for Courtnall. Broken up by Gary Galley. Don Sweeney and Galley are on. Lazaro checks deeply. And it's out for Schneider. Off for Courtnall. Rolled in deep. Don Sweeney can't clear it. Intercepted by McPhee. McPhee puts it in front. Knocked away. Courtnall a shot and he missed the net. Oh, what a chance he had. Courtnall, five seconds left on the power play. Neely checking the play deep. Bruins are at full strength. McPhee breaks it out. McPhee on Galley. 
D moves it in front. Skated off by Janney. Janney in the center ice. Janney over the line. Holding. A loose stick. Gets it to Wesley. The shot wide. And a whistle. The net apparently dislodged. And Nylon has been crashing that net all night long. He did on the Neely goal. Boston 2, Montreal 1. Third period on Nesson. Face off outside the Montreal line. Just about three minutes played. And the Canadians denied on the power play. They had two shots. Boston leads 2-1 to one on goals by Neely and Rajichka Skrudlin for Montreal. Nyland pokes it in. Danny trying to get in on Deja Dad does. Checks him. Bruins battle deep. Wesley pinches in. Is hit by Keane and the Canadians clear it out. Hammond back for it. Fires it up. Block. Lafayette trying to move. Gilchrist does. Gets it over the line. Broken up by Hammond. Great Hammond. back checking again by Genjani. Nyland over the line. He is broken up. Savard trying to move. Hammond stops him on the board. The puck to Weimer. Weimer and Hammond, the Boston defense. LeBabe fires it in. Back is Weimer. Around for Neely. Some open ice for Neely. Wing to wing for Nyland. Nyland hit by Cote. Goes down. Neely takes down Gilchrist. Burridge keeps it in. He just came on. Goes behind the net. Trying to put it in front. Check near the net. Knocked off in the corner. Nyland there. Wraps it around the other side. Weimer moves in. Keeps it in for Boston. Lines changing on the fly. Schneider hit by Burridge. Savard winding up. Gets it out the center ice. It is broken up by Hoover. Now Roche winding up. Looking for open ice. Gets by Weimer. Over the line. Fires and misses. A screaming shot. And nobody fires him any harder. Roche over the line. He's broken up. Back comes Doris. Doris up the right wing side. Goes deep. Gets by the defense. Puts it in front. Just knocked away. Kicked in by Don Sweeney. A shot kicked by Burridge. Went wide. As Don Sweeney had it near the net. This line fights to keep it in. Hoover wraps it in deep. Schneider gets it away to Scrooglin. Two to one Boston. Scrooglin's are going to need a change. They've pooped. Bork trying to break up. Scrooglin gets it to Corson. Tip goes back to Desjardins. Desjardins for Courtnall. Courtnall broken up by Hoover, who checked his man and clears it out. That line is just playing superb. Doris intercepts at center ice on Desjardins and fires it in. And the Bruins change up. Continuing action. 14.45 left. Savard had to avoid a check there. And this is icing against Boston as Dufresne is back. 14.39 left. Third period. Boston 2 and Montreal 1 on Nesson. And here Bruins a little late getting to that point, man. Two red sweaters and no white there for a second. That's not a, a happy sight. No, not if you're a Bruins fan. If you're a Canadian fan. Not if you're fan, a Andy Moog. You're thrilled. Pulling on the draw. Squeako with it. Able to clear it out. Major Dan. Gilchrist. Wrap it over the line. Savard trying to cut in front. Check. Loose. And just cleared out by Squeako last second. Maybe icing. And the Bruins back on their heels a little bit as they have not been over two periods. A couple of good individual moves by Montreal Canadians have made it happen. And as Savard extremely good with the puck. He bails out, he turns, he cuts, he weaves back and forth. Right here he gets sent in alone. I thought this was offside. Left Bruins around. Here's a nice play by Savard, just chops it across and then catches up to it. Never got back to him. Very fine line between playing a controlled, aggressive game and also being tentative, thinking, I got to get back. It Philadelphia Flyers, Dave, uh, yeah, I always had that, that control. They play right on the edge of penalties all the time. And then 
that offense is right there. They're always muscling you, muscling you, but they're always ready to go back on offense. So. You mean back on D, you mean? Yeah, back on yeah. D. Or when you're on defense, back on offense. There's a chance, there's a time to take a chance. Desjardins' shot is blocked by Poulin, but again, the Canadians got the draw, and that's helped them. The Bruins are able to clear it out. Galley fired it around. And they're on Dufresne. Dufresne's pass deflected away by Galley, covered by Don Sweeney. He gets it outside the line. Gilchrist knocks it back in. Don Sweeney with Savard in front. Cuts away from Savard. Carries. Over the line. Still going. Where is it in? Cote with it. 14.30 left third period. Christian breaks it up. Can't set up Poulin. Dufresne checked by Poulin. Poulin take it down. And Savard strikes it out. Weaving. Gets it over the line. Drops it for Cote. Cote walks in. A save by Andy Moog on Cote. Walked right in. And the Bruins, Spico, ices it. All right, Cote. Now. In within 25 feet. It is Boston 2, Montreal 1. Back in a moment on Nesson. You know, you got to keep your cool in this game. Probably one of the best compliments a hockey player can get, no matter what your caliber, is to be such a thorn in your opponent's side, such a tenacious checker as Randy Burridge was, that somebody's just going to try to clean your clock. Just, I got you. I'm just going to knock you down and, and bury you. Right? You were uh, a pain in the side type of player, weren't you? Uh, no, I wanted to Play be. on. Rajitska is out there. He scored for the lead on a power play goal. This is a power play. Gianni Danini scores! Danny and Ruzicka, they forgot about Neely for a split second. Dee Carbono. Dee Carbono is just screaming at somebody. His own teammates. But watch the play. When Vladimir Ruzicka gets it, comes back to Wesley, who keeps it in around the board. So Ruzicka's down low behind the net. Here's Passing. Neely curling out in front. Right there. Good play. Is that uh, Elaine Cote who let him go? Yes, it was Cote who let him go. And that's who Carbonneau was mad at. Bork cleared this. Roa forced to play it with Lazaro streaking in. Lazaro moves it to Janney. In front, Neely scores! Neely from Janney and Lazaro to make it 4-1. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Patrick for Neely. Three for Cam Neely. The Garden Faithful have ignited. Pat Burns can't understand this. The Boston Bulls have awakened. That puck was cleared by Bork. It was going to be icing, but Roy had to play it because Lazaro had, was the nearest man. Right, and that exactly, Fred, what happened. The speed of Jeff Lazaro, he will not get an assist, but he made it happen. Yes, he will get an assist. Wow. He fed it to Janney, and he? he fed Neely. Okay, he gave his right to He curled in the corner with it. Excellent goal. That's career hat trick in the playoffs. Number three for Cam Neely. Tell you what, that happened so fast, it totally caught me off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a game this is. Uh, Neely could have had a hat trick in the second period. You look at the shots on goal over two periods. Neely had two in the second period, but his best chance, he missed the net. So he had five great opportunities over two periods. Here in the third, two more. He's had six shots on Patrick Roy. And you wonder what happened to the idea of Pat Burns of putting Mike McPhee on Neely. I don't know. It's it working. didn't work tonight. He didn't do it at all. Tonight. No, he just decided to go out and skate and play hockey, and that was a big mistake. I think Burns' his first mistake, his team was so pumped up. They came out to play physical. They were going to run the Bruins out of their own building, and I think that was a 
a mistake to even try that. The Bruins respond very well to being hit. They are not a hitting hockey club, but they respond well to being hit. You know what was impressive? After getting the goal to go up three to one, huge goal. A lot of teams with 11 minutes or so, 12 minutes left to go, would say, all right, let's think D. The Bruins went right after him and went for the juggler. They went for the kill. That's something Mike Milbury has tried to instill in this hockey club all season long. When you got him down, keep him down and go after him, and the Bruins did it. When you got him down, kick him is the expression. Well, the unsung heroes, uh, not unsung on this telecast, to me, are Ron Hoover, Randy Burridge, and Peter Doris. No doubt in my mind. How about uh, Craig Janney with four assists and some heavy body work? Craig Janney is playing a marvelous game. A lot of times we talk about his hands, his offense, and a lot of people totally, completely overlook the way he, when he wants to, back check, and he plays defense. It is the sixth power play for Montreal. They're one for five. Wesley battling in the corner. Galley two. Poulin watching. Poulin gets it. Back for Schneider. Intercepted. Wesley. Clears it up. Hustling is Lazaro. Down near Rawa. Power play for Montreal. They're six. They're one for five. Boston is two for five. Cam Neely has a hat trick. Craig Janney, four assists as the Bruins lead four to one. 10.35 left. Third period. Desjardins passed it in. Stop. Don Sweeney to Poulin and the clear. Schneider winding up. Change up for Pat Burns up front. Out comes Corson. Trying to go straight through, the puck does. Knocked away by Cold in the corner. Fought for him. Burridge knocked down. Able to tie it up on, on the boards, though. Burridge wants Corson for the stick in the face. At least he's going to let him know. I know what you did. I was down on the ice trying to hold on to the puck. You give me a little tuck in the, tuck in the nose there with the stick. <laughs> Looks like a glee club. <laughs> I don't know what section that is. It's leading the choruses of na na goodbye, but they can't carry a tune in the peach basket. Face off out to the left of Moe. 51 seconds left. Here's Burridge along the on the boards. There's the stick in the face. Twice. Twice got away with it. Schneider a shot. Trickled in, knocked away by Moe. Wesley. And Burridge clear it out. Pushed him down to check on Desjardins. 35 seconds left on the sixth Montreal power play. Up for Keane. Broken up by Galley. Trying to clear. Can't. Over on the right board. Desjardins knocks it in. Galley gets it. Up and out. What a game Gary Galley has played as well, Fred, thus far. Work in the penalty box. 15 seconds left on his penalty. Galley and Wesley, the Boston defense. Ricochets around. Savard with it. Cross for Schneider. Fires. Great pad save by Andy Moe. Schneider again. Shot blocked by Poulin. Skated away by Galley. Bork is out. Galley cleared it. Goes into the stands. The shots are 30 Boston. 15 Montreal. 9.06 left third period. Cam nearly a hat trick and a 4 to 1 lead for Boston. Faceoff will be inside the Boston line. Cam Neely has 11 goals in the two series. Well, he's got three. May as well get another one. Ten minutes left in this one. Vladimir Rajichka playing on the Bruins' power play. Helped it click for two goals. He's been out there for three shifts he's got a goal and an assist he's got a total of maybe maybe 40 <laughs> seconds on the ice i don't think he has a minute to play right i'll give him 40 <laughs> seconds right not bad let's play him for 40 huh yeah. leading the league for uh, points as <laughs> opposed to minutes canadians trying to keep it in bork knocks it away boston back at full strength neely there with nyland 
Nyland flips it in. Back is Cote. Drives it out. Back is Don Sweeney. Ken Hammond hasn't played too badly on defense on his appearances. Hasn't Winner. played that much. And Hoover and Duras up from the main Mariners. They were called up when the Mariners were eliminated, but this is their first game. Here's Neely over the line. Stops. Intercepted. And breaking out is McPhee. On Don Sweeney. With Portnoy. Try to stuff it. Stopped by Moe. And away comes Nyland. Nyland drops it in wide. 8-12 left. Third period. Boston 4, Montreal 1. Doris steals on Quartnall, but can't convert it. Doris has made a couple of interceptions. 25-year-older, number one pick of Winnipeg. And Rick Bonus recommended him to the Bruins. Doris playing a fine game. He's out there with Burridge and Hoover. They're taking a regular shift. Wesley clears it up. Canadians able to tap it in wide of mold. Roberge is on, has played very little. And you know what Burns wants him for. Here's a steal by Burrard. Breaking, going in. Try to cut in, and he's just broken up. From behind by Desjardins. Knocked down on the play, back up, gets it. Slides it to the corner. Roberge is there to instigate maybe a fight or two or, or a tough check. No, I don't think Roberge is a hitter. I don't think he knows how to hit. Well, he's, there's another steal by Squeako. Squeako in shot. Say Roy. Rebound. Pull it. Back to Bork. Bork shot. Hit Christian. Went wide. Christian pokes it in deep. Squeako on Desjardins. Bruins have dominated this game. The shots show that. But it was close until an explosion in the third period. Two quick goals, both by Neely. And Deep Poulin steals the puck on Richet. Drops it behind the net for Spreko. Spreko trying to set up Christian. Doesn't work. Canadians clear it into the stands on a face-off call. 6.32 left third period. Boston 4, Montreal 1. Back in a moment on Nesson. Craig Janney took the blame. Now... Does he reap the accolades after this one? He should, Turk. He should. A lot of people pointing at Janney and disappearing in this series. Not true. Not true. Not true at all. It was a team collapse. You know, it was just like early in the season. People yeah. saying, what's wrong with Craig Janney? Nothing. He was doing what he was asked to do. The points just weren't coming, that's all. On the faceoff, Joris keeps it in. Burridge. What a sermon yes. he has been. Sprung loose by Mike Milbury. Here comes Richet. The shot. The save by Moe. That came from the blue line. Doris takes the hit from Corson, but gets it for Burridge, who makes the clear out. See, the key there was Doris getting... He knew he was going to get hit, but he had Burridge to give it to. And that's just hustling for your teammate. Get in his spot so he can get him off the hook and get it out. Scrudlin has the Montreal goal, but it came in a power play. The Burridge line was not checking him then. What a job they have done on that Canadian line of Corson, Richet, and Scoodlin. Hit him. Put down. Oh, he almost lined up by Lazaro. Had to get rid of it. And it's cleared back in by Neely. Odeline clears it out. Canadian body sprawled. Here comes Neely. Drills it. Save. Lazaro can't center it. And Put down winds up. Uh, Schneider, Schneider, Savard and Janney. Janney. Here's a battle at... Sunrise. Janney jumped him. Savard cheap shot at him. Chris, Craig Janney jumped him. Said, I had enough of you. You know where that all started? It started at center ice with Corson faked the run at Janney. And Savard came along and took a slash at Janney. And Janney went down, caught the number, and said, I'm going to get you. That's all. Dennis Savard was the most... Stun player you want to see when Janney threw the gloves off and went after him. Denny Savard picked up the extra penalty. I have to assume that the slashing penalty was going to be called. This is after the slash when Janney is now trying Janney, to track down Janney's his man. Janney's curling to take his check. There's Savard. Oh, yeah. Okay, you want to go. Now, great Janney, when he throws the gloves off, 
Benny Savard gets the upper hand in the wrestling match. Well, I like to see that. I wonder how many times at any level well, Craig you, Janney has gotten a fighting penalty. Right. Well, you got somebody like Craig Janney and any opponent. You, you guys know that. Wayne Gretzky doesn't fight. We're going to be calling Stick him, him Knuckles Jr. Yeah. I like that. Stand up for yourself. <laughs> enough is enough. I play the game clean, and that's where I expect it to be played back. You know, if you want to live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. That's the code of the tough guys. But the finesse players take an awful lot of abuse. Still do their job. Craig Janney just lost his temper a little bit. Janney, five minutes for fighting, survived five minutes for fighting, and two for instigating. 1435. Power play for Boston. We were talking about Craig Janney. How many times has he got the fighting penalty? How many times has Denny Savard gotten one? Denny Savard, pretty chippy player. Pretty, yeah, he's a tough little. But player. has he gotten in and actually thrown punches? Yeah, I think so. Corson over the line, short-handed, rolls it in, low, locks it off, and the Bruins start it back. 5-12 left, third period, four to one, Boston. They don't need a power play goal here. Bork is slowed down by team around the boards Rajichka can't get it Canadians control and Keen wraps it in Bork back Gold wheels it around Poulin knocks it out Bork knocks down Keen Rajichka out there on the power play he has a goal and an assist in brief appearances both on power play Poulin wraps See, it in Rajitska's success is he makes the early play. He does not fool around with it. Portnall is offside as he tried to break away, and that's all the Bruins have to guard against on that on this power play. Got it, Owen Neely uh, exchanging words. I think if it was about two or three minutes, about two minutes left in the game, Neely might haul off and crack at one. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got three. Huh? I tell you, Gay Carbonell would be one. Would be hard pressed to survive that one. Right there's a the nice pass by Rajitska. There he's nice. He sees the guy in motion, Dave Poole, and he waits, crisscrosses, and slides it slowly. You can control it. Excellent pass. About a minute left on the power play for Boston. Deja Dan trying to clear, kept in. Now broken up, and Carbonell breaks. Three Bruins back on him. He is stopped. Portnall steals the puck inside the line. Killing time. We have 420 left. Regulation, a three-goal Boston lead. Portnall gives it to Bejardin. Bejardin. Carbono broken up. Back comes Poulin. Poulin inadvertently cleared it back in the Boston zone. Bork bothered by Carbono. Now turns it back the other way. Galley breaking it out. It's broken up. Portnall with it. Under four minutes left. Portnall can't clear it. Juris trying to move in. Rewarded on the power play. Oh, a belt by Portnall there. And let's see. Everybody coming in for Boston. Burridge barreling in. Portnall wraps Screeko. Well, Gary Galley's got Portnall isolated all alone. Let's see what Cornell wants to do now with a cheap shot high stick punch. Oh, he's got Galley, but now he's going to get Scrutland in to save him. Peter Durst will go with Scrutland, and Brian Scrutland doesn't understand it. Durst can really go. Gary Galley. Linesman got him now. Galley to be hurting any of that hamstring. This is going to deteriorate. You got four minutes left. How do you like Odeline, though, coming in out of nowhere and cross checking Strico in the pile? Well, that's what Odeline does. Yeah, but he's a tough enough kid. He doesn't have to do that. We have 349 left, and suddenly it says 325. Well, the Bruins will take that. I just clicked off. <laughs> you can you can run it down a little bit. And here's what happens. All right, this is offside. I think there's a cheap shot by Cortnall who 
Another cheap shot on Durs. I think she's fine. Otherwise, there's Odelai. There's there's Odelai. 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 So Montreal frustrated at this point. Trying to settle little battles along the way. Most of it is embarrassment. They came in, in here just flying, just thinking this was going to be a cut. A piece of cake. Greg Janney throws off the gloves, goes at Savard. Finally, all the talking stopped, and the boys said, All right, look, enough talk. Gary Galley, right there. Who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? Cardinal, uh oh. Now, what am I going to do? Nice little move there by Cardinal. Yeah. I like that one. <laughs> little fade and slide. Yeah, Bob and Wee. <laughs> That yard between Galley and Cortnall, you don't cross. You make the other guy come to you. The guy that goes in loses 95% of the time. For the Bruins tonight, Craig Janney has assisted on all four goals. Two of them have been power play goals by Neely and Wojcicka. Cam Neely has three goals. Wojcicka, the other one. Scrudlin scoring for Montreal on a power play. From the outset, the Bruins out shooting Montreal 17 to 7 in the first period. Have uh, really dominated. Oh. There's the butt end right there in the face of Peter Duras. You know, earlier uh, you guys were talking about this guy's played a great game, this guy's played a great game. And when you come right down to it, all and it's good trick you can beat a team like Montreal at this time of the year. Well, that's the way Montreal played in Montreal. They showed up as a unit, they had discipline, they played hard, they played tough. The Bruins just wrestled this one away from him and then exploded in the third period. And Odeline got a cross checking. And uh, Portnall and Galley, five minutes each for fighting. Another power play, Boston. So the Canadians are destructing. In deep, Poulin trying to make the play. Scooper has been upended. Poulin is knocked down. Fought for in the corner. Another elbow here, this by Lefebvre. And the Bruins just have to play it cool. The Canadians. Positively frustrated as the Bruins have outshot them 32 to 17 and easily deserve the four to one lead. Watch Rua here on Squeako. A little high stick there. Good intent. The tenors will do that to upset you just to get you to think twice about coming near their net. Canadians going to play this chippy. No doubt about that. Cam Neely might be leading everybody in uh, goals of the series. Ray Bork is on. Gets it to Squeako. Squeako holding. Janney's in the penalty box. So Squeako across for Christian. Just blocked by the shade. Christian digs it out. Back to Wiener. Over to Bork. Bork loses to Scrudlin. Played out for Cote. Not a threat to really go anywhere. And he's broken up. 238 left in the third period. Four to one Boston. You're right, Fred. Cam Neely leads the NHL now in playoff goals with 11. Hull has 10. 10 right. And back for Ken Hammond. He's on with Ray Bork. Breaks it out. Here comes Hammond with a threat. Going deep. Puts it in front. Deflected. Block. Dug out by Squeako. Back for Wesley. Across for Hammond. Fires and misses. Wesley with it. Two minutes left. Up for Squeako. With Poulin. Across now for Hammond. Has to chase it. Gets it in for Squeako. Christian. One-timer. Into the stand. Face off. Might have been deflected by a Canadian. 23 seconds left on the power play. Not a bad one at all for Boston. 148 left. I think Davy Christian caught this in the tip of the stick, just airmailed it. Canadians in this game, it would appear to me early in the third period. They seem to have a few threats going, but they've only had a total of 17 shots. That means seven here in the third period. Which is, which is pretty goes pretty well goes along with what you were thinking that early in the third period they did get, did get a few shots. And Andy Moog and, was there. Never had a chance on the deflection by Scrudlin, the lone goal for the Canadians. Over the line, Doris breaks in, shoots up just wide. Peter Doris flashing all night long. Burridge back to Wiener. Up to Burridge. Burridge unloads. It is blocked. 
kept in by Don Sweeney in the corner. Uh, whistle here. What's McCrary calling? Calling a slash. Hoover jousting. He has played <laughs> a terrific game at left wing. Uh, checking. He's been watching Richet. Randy Burge in Lefebvre. How about Burridge as a centerman? I like him as a centerman. I said that about him when he played it a couple of years ago. He just, just naturally went to the position. He, he's a great little checker. He can turn on a dime. He's tenacious. He can change motion, change his body speed. And he, you can't shake him. But he's not going to be a centerman in the playmaking style of a no, candy. He's not. No, uh, no. This no, is a digger. No, no. He's the third line defensive centerman. He has won. Probably 65% of his face-offs tonight. He has not let his man go. He has forced the defenseman out from behind the Montreal net. He has hit. He did. He didn't get his points. Believe me, as a centerman. Cooper Bruins has gone to the dressing room and we'll have to see will have Yeah, he's just gone out for the altercation. They're both high-sticking each other. Now he gets the extra two. Got the extra two. Maybe the only two. So 126 left. The Canadians will have a power play. I know you may think this foolish, but what you don't want to do is the Montreal Canadiens to score in this power play. You really want to go out and kill it effectively, kill it well. Minute 26 left in the game. How about Peter Doris? Just playing great. Some, some offensive moves. That, uh, you get Rick Bonus that spoke highly of him. Yeah, number one pick for the Winnipeg Jets. So the talent is there. Now he's getting the, the night. The emotion was there to go with it. And the opportunity to play. Deja Dan, two minutes slashing Hoover. A 10 minute misconduct. And Deja Dan. That penalty goes to Deja Dan. The Bruins are on a power play. Oh, the Hoover two was just coincidental. He got the extra two then. Well, Hoover just got a 10-minute misconduct. Oh, yeah. So that doesn't affect the strength. So Lazaro plays left wing. Burridge at center and Doris at right wing. A reward by Mike Melbury for their great work. Checking. They get one run. Hoover's going to be upset. <laughs> <laughs> All night long I worked with you. What are you doing to me, boys? Weimer and Hammond play the point. Canadians clear it. 115 left in the third period. Cote rolls it in. Randy Burns still hitting people. We thought it would be Hoover going out on a power play Montreal. It's the reverse. Desjardins. Oh. One minute left. We might got it over the line. In deep. Burrard. In front. Tip. Just wide. As Lazaro is knocked down. The net dislodged. Punch thrown on uh, Lazaro as he battled Cote. Peter Duras isn't finished with Gilchrist yet either. The linesman realizes it. Got in quickly. Boston leading four to one. Three goals. A hat trick for Cam Neely. Top scorer among all players in the Stanley Cup playoffs with 11 now. And Craig Jenny has four assists. Right here going to the net. Gilchrist takes Doris. Nice play across. Lazaro wanted to just redirect, drag it in the net. Almost had not Lazaro put a stick on it. I think Doris would have been able to shovel it in. Get Doris out there for a little dance there with Gilchrist. The fans are filing out content with this wonderful performance from the opening whistle by the Bruins. Burridge on the face hop. Jeff Lazaro. He figured in the hat trick. Quick shot here by Duris. Missed the net as the Bruins got the draw. Burridge has been winning those face offs. Back comes Duris now. Rolls it in. Cote there. Behind the net. Hit. Penalty on Burridge. And here are Lazaro Lafave. Everybody getting into this one. Scoodlin and here's Burridge coming out to Lafave. 
jumps on him, grabs him. Hey, everyone's sticking together here. Now, Garson, the toughest guy out there, Peter Durst, got him so filed off. Referee trying to keep them apart. Lazaro, Strudlin's out there with Hammond. How about that power, John LaFave? He's giving away about a foot as well as yeah. a lot of weight. A lot and of he weight. Came barreling over. 32 seconds left in the game. Hey, this is the time <laughs> to take your shot. There it is. Lazaro was entangled with LaFave. We may be left with just. I uh, hope Hammond doesn't relax. Four Not players. relax on Strudlin. There you go. <laughs> we, we may be left with just uh, four players. Each. Well, this is silly. Lazaro and Burridge to go to the box, go home, go to the dressing room. All the Canadians that were in, in, involved are in the penalty box. All started with Craig Janney jumping Dennis Savard. Craig Janney? I sure led the way in That's about right. 10 minutes ago. <laughs> There's LeFave. Now watch Burridge come out of nowhere. I tell you. Nothing pulls a team together quicker. Nothing makes you feel better about being a, being with a hockey club when somebody jumps in to bail you out in the fight. You know you're not alone out there. Makes you feel like, hey, it's all worth it. Doesn't matter what happens to the rest of the world, that dressing room, that team has to pull together in the tough sledding. Did you feel the Canadians came out hitting? And of course, what that did was wake up the wake Bruins. Wake up. The, I mean, the, I think the Bruins, Mike Milbury had the Bruins prepared regardless. But I think Pat Burns sensed that and wanted to physically beat them up. I think we, Montreal is saying to themselves, we got a physically tougher team than you. And that's not the case. Burridge Lazaro leads with a nice round of applause. And Lazaro gets the extra two minutes. Bill McCrary trying to sort it all out. And the Bruins sorted it out with their big guns just resting quietly now after the Janney Neely Rajichka combination paid off with a hat trick for Neely and four assists on the four goals by Craig Janney. You know, I think with the Bruins, when the Bruins scored that second goal, I think Rajitska's goal was just a backbreaker. I don't think Montreal felt that they were going to mount, mount much of a much of an attack. And they didn't have very many shots at that point. I mean, Rajitska put it away, made it 2-1. They just rest of the game, uh, each tended, team short of man. They tended to get desperate. Weimer clears. 25 seconds left. Doris and Hodge. Weimer and Hammond on for Boston. Here comes Corson for Strudlin. Right in. Block. Good block by Hammond. As he goes behind the net. Fought for. Hammond digging for it. Corson gets it. Comes in front. Mold makes the stop. Puck loose. Jam. Whistle. Tied up. And Hammond. In a wrestling match now with three seconds left. With Odeline and Corson, or uh, rather with Dufresne. Shane Corson in it. Tough kid. Ooh, a sneak punch by Cote on Hodge. This one's not over yet. Now he got it. Elaine Cote just threw a sucker punch at Hodge. Oh, what a, what a move. Three seconds left. When Peter, just Peter Duris very calmly, effectively stood there with Brian Scrutland. Peter Duris, we don't give him much credit. Seen him fight twice in a very good pair of hands. Hodge is sent out with Cote. So uh, Hodge must have done something, and Cote wrapped him. Three seconds left. And you're in front of the net. Now, this is just off the crossbar. You can't do this. You can't let this happen to your goalkeeper at this stage of the game. Of course, he's going, trying to get to the net, but Hammond's not going to let him do that. So Corson and Hammond in a little wrestling match.
Okay, uh, just waiting to complete the final three seconds. Drop the puck. What you do is you take two take two centermen out the center ice and drop it. <laughs> and call it. Janney is out of the penalty box after his five minute major. All this done without Chris Nyland. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a flock of fights. Five minute majors. Well, there's Hodge pushing the glove in the face of Cote, and then he got the punch. Cote got a nice, nice left in there. He punched by Lane Cote. See, when you do the glove in the face trick, you got to be set. You got to wait for the, you know, with three seconds left, you got to figure somebody's going to try to punch in the mouth. Already Pittsburgh has eliminated Washington. Pittsburgh standing by and probably looking on for this windup. They know they'll face the winner of this series as the Bruins take a lead three games to two. And what a game that's going to be Saturday night on TV 38 from Montreal. Vladimir Rajichka for the faceoff. Well, he had two points in his first two shifts. And he was played a little bit in the third period after that. Now he's, he's going to ruin his ratio points per seconds played. That's it. Ukraine knocked it in. The Bruins salute Andy Moog. He looked at 19 shots, could do nothing on the Scoobin power play goal. Cam Neely, three goals. Craig Ganny, four assists. Vladimir Rajichka, a goal and an assist. And the Bruins, with two power play goals, win the game four to one.